Why hello there! A while back I jokingly made a video where I did a Cinebench test where I pitted an old Athlon 64 system up against a new Ryzen system, and in that video I slightly overclocked the Athlon as well as the Ryzen. And a couple of other YouTubers saw that, commented on it, and we started chatting. After a while of interesting discussion we all got the very bright idea of having an old school CPU overclocking challenge. The goal of this challenge? To overclock a single gore processor as high as it can possibly go, and then see if we can game on it, and then see how well it would work in productivity tasks. The two other YouTubers that partook in this challenge with me was The Obsoletist and the channel Retro Adventure. Both of these guys are really knowledgeable folks that also have a video on this very thing, so check it out on their channels as well. Link in the description. But to be a proper showdown we had to have proper rules. So the rules for this showdown would be that we can use any single core CPU that was released in 2005 or before. Any motherboard it can fit in, any amount of RAM, any cooling solution, any hard drive, power supply, GPU, and operating system. We would be benchmarking the 3D Mark Vantage Physics Test, Handbrake, 7-Zip, CSGO, On the Training Ground, just for repeatability's sake, League of Legends on Summoner's Rift, From Minion Spawn to the 10 Minute Mark, and World of Tanks in the Training Ground, again for repeatability's sake. In addition, we would be judging based on the highest percentage overclock achieved over the base clock and the highest actual overclock. With the rules set out, I went in search of my CPU. Back when the single cores roamed, I had an Athlon 64, so that's what I decided to go with because that's what I was familiar with. In particular, I chose the fastest ever single core Athlon 64, the 4000 Plus. That CPU had a base clock back in 2005 of 2.4 GHz with plenty of headroom for more. And back in the day when these were new, it was normal for them to reach 2.8 to 3.2 GHz on air, depending what stepping you got. So that's what I was hoping for. With that in mind, I also decided to use my knowledge of steppings to give me the edge up and get a good CPU. For those of you who don't know, a stepping is basically like a minor revision change on the process that the CPU is made on, and the numbers on top of the CPU in this location is the stepping. As you can see here, the stepping is a CABGE0528 CPCW. I happen to know that when this chip was new, this particular stepping easily could get 3 GHz on air. So to match the CPU, I needed a motherboard that could overclock as well and the ASUS A8N32 SLI was highly regarded as the best Socket 939 overclocking motherboard at the time, so that's what I picked up. I very understandably had a very hard time finding a 13 year old motherboard, but I did find one and I picked it up. After receiving the motherboard, it was clear that some scrapper had this card and saved it from the trash heap. However, previously some ham-fisted ape yanked out all of the components causing severe damage to the SATA ports, PCIe ports, and the board itself. So I had to go out and pick up a second one. And that one looked even worse. It looked like a B-52 carpet bomb the bottom side of the board, however, heroically as you saw in a previous video, it still worked. The firewire was fucked, but everything else seemed okay. At first. When I started doing my initial benchmarks is where I started to see some of the issues with this motherboard. For some reason one of the DDR slots didn't work, so that limited me to 3GB of DDR400. It's not that big of a deal because none of our games really utilize that much RAM anyways. After the baseline benchmarks were run, we began overclocking. After quite a bit of fiddling and frustration, we managed to get the old girl to 2.88GHz. Not shocking, but alright. A little bit less than a 500 MHz overclock on a 2.4 GHz chip. The reason we couldn't go higher was all up to the motherboard. The CPU had it in it to go higher, but the north bridge of the motherboard was old and tired. If I tried to go any higher, even with increasing the north bridge voltage, I would lose all USB and IO support, so 2.88 was all I got. As you can see, there is an improvement in performance by overclocking, but was it enough to beat out the obsoletist and retro adventure? Well, a little bit later we're going to have a special judge compile the results and come up with a winner. So I will make sure to point you to that video as soon as it gets released. And make sure to check out their video to see what hardware they chose and how far they managed to get their old chips. If you like this sort of content, make sure to let me know. Or if you have suggestions for other comments, make sure to let me know that as well. 
As always, thank you folks for watching. May your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I'll catch you folks next time.